to me about slavery. And the only thing that they did bad to us was slavery. See, after you supposedly freed us, it wasn't like everything was right after slavery. No, you guys know you can't compete. So therefore, you set laws, process of keeping those like children down. And then just started killing us, 2012 all the way, uh, freaking 2019 or so, and still don't. But shit, almost every other freaking day, definitely every week, there are several freaking killings of innocent black people unarmed by police. You know, they, you know, they seem really intelligent. It's easy to be nice to you when you're in a town. Even if they want to sit there and act as if they act like we're equal, then they're, and they're the wise ones that we must listen to. Take this money and we can all profit off of this. Ask no questions and just take the money. Don't make any waves in the water. Now, if you don't do as we say, then we're going to penalize you. We'll fine you. So it makes more logical sense to take the money. That's exactly what happened. And now, people are dying. They got laws to where they're protected from being sued. The whole world is it trying to ignore that 800 pound gorilla in the corner. That's stupid. <laughs> but yet they demanded that you put something in your body. And then, nah, now I ain't willing to take responsibility for what's happening. <sighs> something of you. That ain't come from the giver of the breath of life. And I don't even know how to explain 
because right now I'm suffering um, with no arm and I still only have less than three dollars to my name a dollar in my cash app and 172 in my bank account That's two dollars and seventy-two cents altogether to my name, plus twenty cents in survey. But I can't touch that until I at least reach, I think, fifteen to twenty dollars. You have to reach a certain amount before they let you cash out, and then they don't—they don't send you the surveys that they offer. And when they do send it, it's at inconvenient times. And if you don't do it, like right then and there, then they have these little birds up there that say, oops, sorry, it was a time limit. Like, bruh, ain't nobody got time to just drop whatever the hell they doing to do your survey? And I don't check my email like that. Like, so anyway... I ain't chasing after the riches of this world. But I've been endowed with knowledge from the Most High because I have inquired of all of these things. So He's given me what I've asked for. I didn't ask for the riches of this world. I didn't ask for fame and honors and glory of men. I had questions about this world in my life and why things were the way that they were. And I began to receive the answers for that and clarity and understanding. And I have a wealth of that. But yet I'm physically impoverished. And it absolutely sucks on one hand and is glorious on the other. Okay? So that's why it's hard to understand. That's why it's hard to explain how I feel right now. Because I can't altogether say I'm miserable because I was told and directed to give praise while I'm in the fire to literally give thanks while I'm impoverished and have no idea where exactly the money is going to come from other than my power and the hearts that the Father touches to sow unto me, okay? I, other than that, I have no idea where it's going to come from. It's literally 118, I believe. 118 is Thursday. And um, like I said, I got less than three dollars to my name. And I've been living this way, you know, month to month, alright? Though somehow, some way, the father always takes care of my bare necessities as I continue to do this work. <clears throat> and as I said on a recent video, they wear us out living in this reality is difficult. Okay? Now, I, I'm going to talk about something, and, and I didn't plan this. I didn't plan this. Um, but I'm not the type to stew on something. And I already confronted the person about what I'm about to bring up, okay? I already confronted this person about it. In love. Um, but I'm not the type of person to stew on things and um, bury it, okay? I am the type to speak my mind. And 
I don't haul things inside and I don't haul grudges against people. I let people know right then and there how they have offended me. And I ask them to correct it, you know, in a loving manner. You know, I don't come in hostility. There was no hostility whatsoever involved. But heartfelt, it was from the heart. Now, let me go ahead and tell you what I'm referring to. Now, I recently did tell you on a couple of videos that I opened my place up again to help somebody out, okay? It's two people. And I'm not going to tell you who they are. You wouldn't know who they are anyway. And so, I ain't trying to include nobody else's personal business. This is about my life. So, I'm going to keep it about my life. But... Since they are a part of my life in this instance, I'm going to talk about the things that happen, but who they are specifically is not important. Okay? So, I've been sharing my place for about a month or so, a little bit more, and I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. You know? And, um, I've literally done my best to show the same love and I feel like I've succeeded in showing the same love mercy, compassion, kindness um, even empathy, patience and all of these good fruits of the spirit it's like I'm, I'm able to put it to use the things that I've learned about the all power of love and life okay and because I've been awakened to the knowledge of the all power of love and light and how to live our lives and how to treat our neighbor as we treat ourselves and how to love our neighbor as we do ourselves. Not doing anything to your neighbor that you would not want done unto yourself. I have made the conscious choice to live my life by these principles. Okay? So... I have been doing this, all right? But in doing this, it hasn't 100% been reciprocated back to me, okay? It hasn't been equal is what I'm saying, okay? But I'm going to keep it real. Um, I don't think that a lot of it is done on purpose, but... It's because they have grown up in this reality and they have allowed this reality to take a hold of them to where they are this reality, okay? So, let me just tell you the story, okay? So, open up my place to them and I've been doing my best to walk in the fruits of the Spirit, you know, never... Uh, coming out in anger or hostility or any of that is always been in, in a, a righteous manner, okay? But, um, so one day, you're like, now I've been suffering without her, okay? Now, I remember I told you from about November 2nd, I had um, $1.72 in my bank account, okay? That's been since November 2nd. Now, I did get a, uh, I did get a love donation, um, not too long ago. And it helped me in the right specific time that I needed it. And I already brought out a video about it. And, um, so I'm not gonna go into details on that. Um, but back to this. So, I haven't had any herb, okay? The last time I was able to buy herb was when I spoke about it, um, when I when I had bought the two grams, okay? Now, if you notice, that's about two weeks, if not more, uh, interval, okay? And bud smokers know damn well two grams normally wouldn't last very long at all. 
Okay. So that two grams was basically gone. It was gone. All right. And um, I had a few roaches um, that I had asked. Um, or I had actually asked if she would smoke with me. And, um, and she uh, said she didn't have any, but then she gave me, you know, the doobies. Um, the roaches, okay? Well, the next day, the next evening, rather, um, I'm suffering, okay? And I had just took a hit off of the doobie. I, mean, I broke it up and put it in a bowl. And I'm only, you know, taking a hit off of that to take the edge off. It's not like it's pleasurable, okay? It's not like it's pleasurable whatsoever, all right? But for now, it's all I have, okay? So anyway... And I, I've been having to keep my door closed and whatnot because of Tiger and, and I, you know, the frequency of how they go in and out. So I pretty much keep Tiger with me. Um, I've asked to please not stand with the front door open, especially when Tiger is out there in, in, the, in the open. Because he would love to get out and try to sow his oats, but this is not a safe neighborhood for him to get out. Okay? So, um, that's that, but like, yeah, like, yeah, I come out my room, and I smell this dank in the air, like, it smells so damn good, now, this is the second time, the first time I come out, and this, it, it was like in the evening, it was at night, I come out to do something, I went to the kitchen for something, but I forget what, and she was sitting at the table, straight smoking a blunt, okay? She was sitting at the table, straight smoking a blunt. And, um, you know, I looked at her and I said, that smells good. And I went to go do whatever the hell I was doing in the kitchen, you know. And um, it took me uh, like a good five minutes, three or five minutes or so to do what I was doing. And not one time did she offer for me to hit it. You know, I, you know, I walk past and I'm, I look at her, you know, as I walk past and not even looking at me. Like, as if I don't even exist, okay? But now I have opened up my place, and I will share anything that I have with you. If you needed it, if you, you know, desired it, I would, I would, bro, I am not the type of person to have a cold heart like that, okay? And I don't understand people that do. In all honesty, I don't understand that, okay? I have never been that type of person, but yet for some reason I keep encountering and being surrounded by these type of people that do these things to me that I would never do to anybody. And I have to go through that, so I literally had to smell this dank ass bud in my apartment without ever even being able to hit it. Now, there has been times that she asked me if I wanted to smoke, and I said, hell yes. And, like, I just, I'm not the type of person, bruh. That's just, like, I, I, I'm, I'm taken back in my mind to when my car broke down and a co-worker offered to give me a ride to and from work, and I didn't even have to pay, okay? They just offered to come get me, and they didn't ask for anything in return. But in return, while I was working that job, I had enough to supply my herb. That's what I factored into my budget, okay? Because if I'm going to slay for this beast system, I'm at least going to have my pacifier. All right? So that's the way that I see it. So, yeah, I had a, a fund for my herb. And I would literally get, like, I have at least at least a half every two weeks or a uh, um, ounce per month. And, um, so it, when she would come to pick me up, I would always have a blunt roll. And I would share that blunt with her. The co-worker, the co-worker that offered to give me a ride to and from work, she smoked, okay? And every time she picked me up, I had a fat-ass blunt roll to smoke on the way to work, 
okay? She didn't ask me to do that, but that's just the type of person that I am. And because this channel is about my life, I'm going to put circumstances that I've done, different things in my life so, you, so that you can understand the type of character behind the person that you're hearing, the willing vessel that you're hearing, in order to understand the character of this person, you need bits and pieces of this person's life and what they have done in their life so that you can understand their mindset and why they arrived at the conclusion that they have arrived at, okay? See, I have every right to say that I have sown good fruit. I have sown good seed. And I have been surrounded by those that have mistreated me all my damn life. That's why my life has been hell on this earth. And now I have been awakened with the ability to see it crystal clearly and call these things out. Now, when I confronted her about it, um, now this was right after... She had knocked on the door like the damn police. You know, like, oh, oh bruh. I don't, I don't like being disturbed like that. My spirit, all of a sudden, out the clear blue. Bang, 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 bang. Like, what the hell is going on? You know, that shook up my spirit the way that she knocked. You know what I'm saying? Um, It actually shook something within me, like, you know, I could feel the energy of that knock. Like, it was very hostile. And for no reason, because I have only shown love. Okay? I've only shown love. I have not shown any disdain or hatred towards them. Now, the things of this world, you know, like, I have asked that they respect my environment. Please do not bring the world in here as far as the television. I don't want to hear it, you know? Now, they can watch movies. Hell, I watch movies. I'm not trying to be no tyrant, but I don't want to hear no commercials. You know, I ain't trying to I ain't trying to be programmed more than I'm already bombarded with programming in my own damn life. And my home is my sanctuary. Okay, so I need a certain amount of peace in my sanctuary, though I have opened up my sanctuary unto those that I care about and that I treat as myself. Now, um, so there are things that I ask of them not to do, like not to bring any flesh and blood in my apartment. Okay, for well, several reasons. One, I ain't trying to contaminate anything. And two, I just, bruh, no. Like, I'm not trying to have flesh and blood up in here. I ain't trying to smell that. Like, bruh, are you trying to make me gag? Like, no, man. Like, there's, the, look, I can, I can do my best to walk in love, and that's what I have done. But there's lines that has to be drawn, bruh. There, there has to be lines drawn. I ain't cooking no flesh and blood up in my place for, you know, over two years, okay? If I ain't going to do it for myself, I'm not going to let nobody else do it neither, okay? Now, if there's something that I myself is doing, then I have no right to say anything about somebody else doing it. Like their, like their dairy. Okay, they got cheese and stuff like that and, and uh, milk products in the fridge. I ain't say a dang thing about it. You know why? Because when I first gave up eating the dead bodies, I ate a lot of cheese and still was consuming all kinds of dairy, eggs and cheese and all of that. So yes, I let them have their boiled eggs, you know. It'd be different if they were raw eggs and having to use my, my pans to cook them. You know, they would have to use their own pan if they really wanted to cook eggs. But that shit is still blood, okay? That, that's the only reason why. It's because I, I've been awakened to know that it's blood. And I'm not trying to have blood in my pans. So, uh, not because I'm trying to be a tyrant or nothing like that. But, bruh. Uh, yeah, that first time she didn't even offer to let me hit it, you know. So, I just walked by and went to my room, closed the door. And talk to the father, like, Father, 
I know you see this. I know you see how I've been suffering and now I gotta smell some dank, really good smelling herb in my own apartment. Hell, it was one thing, you know, going without and having to freaking smell it in the hallway as someone else's token and I don't know this person and I ain't never, you know, really um, in interacted with this person. That's different than somebody up under your own roof as you're helping them and they don't offer for you to hit and they know damn well that you're suffering. But when I confronted her about it, she said, how was she supposed to know I'm suffering? Like, are you serious? They know my circumstances. They both know my circumstances. She knows damn well that I'm suffering. She knows damn well that I'm 100% dependent upon the Father to supply all of my wants and my needs. Because we talked about it before. And, um, bruh, they know I don't have a job. They know I do not have a job, but that I do this work for the kingdom. Now, how they view that is their choice. I don't really know how they really view it. You know, if they really view it like as if I'm ignorant, you know, because I'm not out there making money like they are. Or if they respect the fact that I'm actually walking in my purpose. Now, I think that one of them kind of does, but I'm not sure about the other. You know, I'm just, I'm talking freely, and they are allowed to listen to this because I'm not speaking anything bad about them. Nothing bad whatsoever, but I'm keeping it 100% real, okay? I care about both of them, and I will do anything in my power for both of them. I would give out of my own poverty what I have. Looking at the resources that I've been going through. Bro, I had to buy toilet paper with the donation, the last donation that I had received. Toilet paper was part of the necessities that I had to buy. I'm down to four rolls of toilet paper. And there's three people going through them. I have no income generating whatsoever. I am 100% dependent upon the Father to touch the hearts of those that are His and that have abundance to sow unto me. This is what the Father has told me. So I am to walk by faith, not by sight, and continue to do the work that He has given unto me. For the first time in my life, I have clarity and understanding of this world and understanding what my purpose is within this world. And for once in my life, I'm walking in that. And at the same time, I have to stand by faith, not knowing when or where the love donations will come in. You know, I, I have no idea how much or when, okay? So, um, I just know to trust the all power of love and light. There's a reason that he rose me up and gave me utterance to speak these words in these days that we're living in. Um, I'm not the type to set myself up above other people. I am not above anybody. I am just a willing vessel that has chosen to humble myself by the leading of the spirit of truth so that I could be retaught by way of the Holy Spirit. So that I can talk by way of the spirit through a physical mortal body in a language that diseased mortal men can understand. <sighs> so, um, I really don't mind at all doing what I'm doing for my neighbors. 
you know, but I do feel like it is a trial, it's a test, you know, and I like this test because I'm able to show forth the glory of the Father, okay, I am his representative, okay, so I ain't trying to shame face the all power of love and light, you know, saying that I was taught by way of the Holy Spirit and then act out in hostility, that doesn't go hand in hand. Hostility is not a fruit of the righteous spirit. No, that's a that's an evil spirit. So I, I live what I speak. Okay? And that's rare in these days. I give out of my own poverty. Okay? And when you look around, that's the way that it pretty much is. I've seen a lot of um, so-called prank videos. Uh, well, not really prank videos, but more so social experiments. So like social experiment videos where they will um, test the population, okay? And they'll go into rich neighborhoods and they'll test the rich people. And pretty much nine times out of ten... All the rich people were evil as hell and was all about the money, okay? They, they didn't have any morals. They had not a moral bone in their body. And then they would go to a poor neighborhood and perform the same exact experiment. And the poor people were way more compassionate and kind and merciful. Well, did you know that that lines right up with the scriptures? Those that are the Father's people is the poor, the destitute, the sick, the needy, the afflicted, the ignored. Okay? It's all those that you disdain. It's all those that you look your nose down upon. Okay? Because most people are like a Pharisee or they're following Pharisees and Sadducees. Okay? They're listening to men upon this earth. While they're ignoring the small, still voice that lives within you. And in these days, they're ignoring the roaring lions like myself that's here to shatter strong delusions. And they take it as if I'm arrogant. <sighs> well, I don't speak in of myself. See, it ain't me. You can't call me arrogant because I'm not speaking my words. I'm speaking by way of the Holy Spirit. So if you got a problem with the things that I'm speaking, you would have to take that up with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, which comes from pureness, from righteousness, the exact opposite of the world in which we all grew up in. And those that then set themselves up in authority over all humanity and all creation, they are about to be shamefaced. And you are about to say everything that I've been saying. The last shall become the first, and the first shall become the last. Okay? The head shall become the tail, and the tail shall become the head. Okay? You're about to see a transfer of wealth from the wicked to the righteous. Because their time is up. Their time is up. The earth cannot take any more wickedness. The earth has already begun her judgments against the wicked. It is already here. And you know it. You can feel it. This audio was not planned. But I had a feeling that I would have something to say. That's why I brought my phone in here. So yeah, bro. Um, later on that day or that night after I had confronted her about it in love again, mind you, it was in love after I confronted her about the way that she knocked on the door and I asked her if everything was alright, like what's wrong and all of this because, you know, her energy seems hostile. 
bro, I'm a real one, and I will keep it real 100%, you know? That's why everything that I said on here, I'm not afraid of these people hearing it. Because it's exactly what I would say to them face to face, and it's what I have said to them face to face. In love. Truth is not hate, okay? Though, in this false ass reality, many of us that are telling the truth end up being hated the most by those that we care for. That's the asinine part. Like, we have the biggest hearts. We have the most compassionate hearts. But yet, people treat us the worst. They will help someone wicked like them before they will help someone pure of heart. That's crazy as hell to me, bruh. But I've seen it all my life. I've seen it all my life how the wicked help out the wicked. And they ignore us that are suffering. See, I'm, the, I'm just the type, bruh. That if I knew someone was suffering, I would definitely help them. Because that's just my nature. Alright, uh, let me get off of here. Shalom.